Hello everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll start with the trigonometry lecture one. Uh, we missed out on cardinal numbers and Cartesian product uh, earlier in this lecture, uh, in the sets lecture. But what we'll do, we'll cover that up in relations because that makes more relevance over there. So let's directly start with the discussion of trigonometry lecture one. So this is question number four for the QAD series. Just pause this, uh, pause the video and Take a screenshot. The definition of angle needs no reduction. So basically angle is a measure of rotation of a given ray about its initial point. What is more important over here is the sign convention. So basically when uh, we go anti-clockwise, then theta is positive and we go, when we go clockwise then theta is negative. It, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but this is how it is being defined. Now talking about the sexagesimal system. So basically you just have to remember this thing. There have been no questions asked on this thing, but just for the sake of introduction, you just have to remember it. So one right angle equals to 90 degrees, one degree equals to 60 minutes, one minute equals to 60 seconds. That is how you have to remember. Just have a look at the notations. So this is dash, this is double dash, and this is 90 degree. You all know that, right? I won't be spending too much time on these concepts because these are just introductory concepts and uh, you just have to remember these things. Now the another measurement of angle systems is radian, which is circular systems. Circular systems in which the unit of measurement is the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc whose length is equal to the radius and is called a radian. So basically, let's say this is our circle, this is our center and uh, this is our radius. Now we are drawing an arc AP whose length is equal to R, which is same as radius. So basically our definition says it when an arc of length radius subtends an angle at the center, that angle is known as one radian. So this is how it's being defined. Now let's look how radians and degrees are being related. Again, uh, the same diagram. Now we also know that uh, length of arc is directly proportional to the th angle subtended at the center by the arc, right? So basically uh, we are considering two arcs over here. First one is APB, the second one is just AP. So in case of APB, AOB is the diameter. So the angle subtended by APB at the center is 180 degree. So angle AOB, which is 180 degree, divided by angle AOP, which is theta, equals to length of APB, which is nothing but half the circumference of the entire circle, because it's a semicircle, that is pi r, divided by length of AP, which is r. So after solving this equation, we get to know that one radian theta equals to 180 by pi. Theta is uh, over, theta over here is one radian, right? We discussed in the definition. When the arc of length radius uh, subtends an angle in the center, that one, that, that angle is one radian. So that's why this is, this is one radian. It's not just theta. This is one radian. It's represented by one RAD. Okay. That comes out to be 50, approximately 57.3 degrees. Now let's discuss the length of arc. This also uses the same concept which we have uh, used in the previous derivation. I think I've made a mistake over here. This is x and this should be rx. Don't get confused by the terminology. I think uh, I made a mistake over here. So that's why I had to do this. Now, uh, from the previous logic, L by x equals to r by theta. Theta is nothing but this is one radian, right? Uh, because this is radius r, this is also radius r, and uh, we know that the angle subtended by the arc of length r of our length radius is nothing but one radian. So from here we can get to know that a equals to rx, right? X is the uh, angle over here. Just don't get confused with the ter terminology. So not basically, if we talk about this circle, this is radius r, this is radius theta. This is not radian. Uh, this is not one radian. This is just random angle theta and radians. So we have to find this L. So in that case, L equals to R theta. So that theta is X over here. Don't get, don't get confused over here. Now let us talk about the area of sector. This is again based on the similar kind of logic that uh, area of a sector is directly proportional to the angle it subtends at the center. Now here angle is theta. This theta is in radians actually. Angle in degrees is x. So uh, 
with our initial logic we know that area of a sector is x by 360 because of the proportionality into pi r square right now we also know that theta equals to x into pi by 180 so when we apply it this particular equation over here then we get a equals to 1 by 2 r square theta right so this is how it's being derived let's look at one example find the area swept by a minute hand of a clock of length 6 cm in 30 minutes so let's say this is a span of 30 minutes this is this is 6 cm now we know that uh, one entire circle is 360 degrees and out of that uh, we have 12 hours in 360 degrees we have 12 hours so basically we have 24 30 minutes right 24 blocks of 30 minutes in one entire 360 degree so we'll divide by 24 so this is the angle which is being subtended by which is being swept by the minute hand in 30 minutes now let's convert it into radians pi by 180 this is in radians now using our initial formula this multiplied by 1 by 2 into r square which is 6 square so this is our area so this is a very simple standard question you might get a difficult version of this question now let's look at the trigonometric ratios in the circular system basically we'll define uh, the ratios in circular system earlier we have defined them with the help of right angle triangles so basically if you remember that let's say this is theta this is hypotenuse this is perpendicular this is base so we know that sin theta equals 2 p by h cos theta equals 2 b by h and tan theta equals 2 p by b right we have uh, derived the trigonometric formulas based on uh, right angle triangle now the limitation over here is uh, we can just measure the angles which are acute we don't know what is sin 120 we don't know what is cos 150 right so for that we have to shift to our circular system so now let's have a look at that now let me do some constructions so this is let's say o this is a this is b and this is c let's call it as theta so remember the arrow which i have marked so this is anti clockwise which is positive and it's acute now based on our previous uh, this is radius r yeah so based on our primitive understanding of trigonometric ratios which is basically based on the right angle triangle we know that sin theta over here is nothing but ac upon r basically length of radius now we can also write at write it as now this is actually perpendicular so we can also write this as bo upon r right in a similar manner we can write cos theta as oc upon r we'll keep this one as the similar one because we are talking about in terms of projections now the definition says sin theta sin of any angle is nothing but projection of radius on y axis so basically it means shadow of oa on this uh, y axis right that will come out to be ob and similarly shadow of oa on x axis will be oc so we call it mathematically as projection so ob is the projection bo is the projection so sin theta is nothing but projection of radius on y axis divided by the length of radius and cos theta is projection of radius on x axis divided by the radius now the interesting point is this particular definition is valid for everything every angle even if i make it obtuse even in that case we can apply the similar logic so we you can see that there is no need of a right angle triangle over here we can define any kind of angle the interesting point over here is now when we make this projection in the second quadrant in that case what we'll get to know 
this length is negative actually right this is the negative axis ne negative x axis so that's why this particular length is negative this particular projection is negative so that's how we know that in different quadrants uh, the signs of uh, these trigonometric ratios get changed right now let's look at further so this is the formal definition which i have discussed sin theta is projection of radius on y axis by length of radius similar for cos theta and similarly for tan theta also note this point projection on positive x axis and y axis are considered with the positive signs and vice versa so basically if we are going uh, for the projection on negative y axis and negative x axis we have to consider the sign as well now let's look at the signs of trigonometric ratios in different quadrants so this is our quadrant 1 this is second quadrant this is third and this is fourth this is theta this is o a this is b and let's say this is c now based on our definition we see that sin theta equals to b o upon r so let's say this is r so we know that bo is in positive y axis right so this is positive y this is positive x so bo is the projection on positive y axis so that's why sin theta in first quadrant is sorry greater than 0 greater than equals to 0 in case of cos theta that is oc upon r so again we can see that it's on positive x axis the projection is on positive x axis so that's why is also positive now tan theta is nothing but sin theta by cos theta so it has it has to be positive now coming to the second quadrant so this is our theta this is y this is x this is o a this is b and this is c now talking about sin theta sin theta again is the projection on y axis divided by radius so this is nothing but bo upon radius we can see that that is positive because bo is the projection on positive y axis now talking about cos theta so here cos theta is the projection on negative axis that is co by r so that's why cos theta is negative in case of tan theta so this is nothing but sin theta by cos theta so this has to be negative so we get to see that how these signs are being derived in first quadrant we we have got all uh, trigonometric ratios as positive in second quadrant we we have got sin as positive but <coughs> sorry we have got sin as positive but cos and tan as negative in third quadrant only tan is positive but sin and cos are negative in case of fourth quadrant uh, i think cos is positive the other two are negative so just for the sake of practice you can have a look at the trigonometric ratios in quadrant uh, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 so today's lecture was till here only and uh, the quizzes notes examples related to this lecture will be uploaded in the portal at around 7 or 8 pm so you can have a look at that as well and tomorrow we'll meet for the next lecture and that will be an important lecture in terms of the solving purpose like this was more of a definition based but the second one will be more relevant for the examination point of view so let's meet tomorrow thanks for watching